In part one of this video, I showed you three methods for developing the photo. In part two, we looked at correcting the geometry of the lighthouse and also sorting out the wonky horizon line as well. In part three, now we're gonna look at adding some detail, see what we can't do to the sky, and just overall give this photo a finished, more artistic look. So let's start with details and see what we can do about that. There are so many great tools for adding details in Luminar Neo, but one of the best without doubt is Structure AI. Now, if I push that all the way to 100, oh, it's far too much, right? But what we can do often is push an amount quite high with any tool and then mask it in so that we start to reintroduce it with much more subtlety. So if I painted that in with 100%, for example, we are going to see exactly 100% of that effect that we put in. And that's not what I want. So I'm just gonna to go to the mask actions and clear that. So we can go again. I'm gonna come back to the brush and this time work with a much lower strength, 24, 25, that's fine. Increase the brush size. And now I'm just going to paint very soft strokes over areas where I want more detail. I like that line of the cloud coming through there, perhaps through this area of the cloud as well. I didn't really like what was going on too much with the lighthouse, particularly in the area down the bottom half. So I'm not going to add any of that structure, but I did think it was a nice addition of detail in the grass. But again, not 100%, just some of the effect. And the path is quite important. So let's see whether we can't add just a bit more detail for the path. And if you feel like you've overdone it in any area, like maybe I've gone a little bit too heavy handed already with the grass area, we can switch to the eraser and just take some of that effect away. And now let's have a little toggle of before and after, before and after. It's subtle, but it is a nice addition of detail. Now I'd quite like to be able to paint in where I have darks, where I have highlights, just refine that a little bit more accurately with my own brush. And one of the great ways to do that is with dodge and burn. But if I start doing a little bit with this tool, you're gonna see quickly that it's not the best tool for doing that, okay? So I'm just painting some darkness, some brightness, and one of the problems with this particular tool is it really intensifies the saturation. So it's not only um, working with the tonal values, it's also increasing color saturation where I use it, and I don't want that. So I'm not gonna use the dodge and burn tool to dodge and burn. Instead, I'm going to come back up to the develop tool. And from here, there's a few different options that we could do to actually create our own custom dodge and burn. One would be just to work with the exposure, drop that down, and then we can mask it in anywhere we want it to be darker. But what I prefer to do is actually do it with the curves tool. And if you think curves is just a little bit too intimidating, then you don't need to use curves, you really don't. But for all intents and purposes, it's just darkened down the photo, just like dropping down the exposure. Now, all I need to do is come into the masking section, and for this, I'm just gonna grab a linear gradient and bring that down from the top of the sky towards the horizon. And if I move out of that tool, you will see that we've darkened down the top of the sky. And that's just a nice way of leading our viewer's eye in towards the more central part of the frame. If we wanted to, we could do a similar thing from the bottom of the frame up. And again, that just helps to darken down the foreground, darken down the top of the sky, and that will naturally lead our viewer's eye to the brightest part of the frame, which is in here. And if I toggle the before and after with these changes, it's pretty subtle, but I like the direction it's heading in. Back in the original versions of Luminar, if you wanted to create a warm golden look to a photo, you had the golden hour slider and it's still inside Luminar Neo but I don't recommend that you use it because it's been superseded by a much more advanced tool the Twilight Enhancer AI and it's that tool that we're going to take a look at now. So you find the Twilight Enhancer AI tool inside this landscape section here third tool down and before we can see anything we need to actually add an amount to the tool and you can see straight away if I push that all the way to 100 with the base settings We've taken the photo from this to this. So it's a pretty huge change. It's a very powerful tool. It's now up to us to make sure it looks the way we want it to. So straight out of the box, we have the option to go for a golden look, a blush, and you can see as I'm going through these, they are very different, very distinct, and they're all driven by the changing of these sliders underneath. 
So which option you go for is entirely up to you, but I think I'll start with Emerald and we'll go from there. We'll push the amount, oh, maybe not all the way to 100, but you want it quite strong so that you can actually see what the effects are doing. So we have an exposure slider, which is obviously controlling the brightness. I don't want to go too bright because I want to keep color information in those brightest pixels. And you'll notice as we boost the exposure up and we push to white, obviously you can't have any color information in white. So we want to keep that exposure quite low. Plus we're either emulating the evening or the morning. So it's going to be a darker time of day anyway. In the sky section here, we have the ability to change the temperature in the sky. So it's really up to us whether we want to go for a cool blue or a nice warm orange. I think we'll go for a kind of warmy orange in this instance. And the dawn slider here is a really great slider because it allows us to add color and vibrance into the sky around that horizon line. And then that just bleeds off through the photo. I really like that. We can control the size of it. So it's a smaller band or a larger one. It's really up to us. And I quite like pushing that just a little bit further up into the sky and maybe just reducing the temperature just a little bit. Now, just below here, we have the scene shade slider. And if we grab that, you're gonna see what happens. It just allows us to darken or brighten the foreground. And so if we've got a brighter sky and it's morning or evening, it makes sense that the foreground is just gonna be a little bit darker. So it makes sense to have that shade slider sat somewhere in the positive numbers. If the foreground's oversaturated, we can bring the saturation of that down as well. If there were people in our scene, the relight human slider allows us to actually control the lighting on them, but obviously we don't have any humans in this one, so no problem. Let's have a little toggle of our before and our after, and that is an absolutely huge change between the two. Now, while the mask is pretty good in most areas, you can see there's just this little anomaly here, and we can actually refine that. See the option for mask refinement, the very last tool entry here. What we can do is actually grab this sky global slider, and you can see as I bring that up, we actually remove that little area. Fix gaps is another slider that we can tweak as well, just to fix and finesse that look. So there you go, putting that around five just manages to get rid of that. So now if I come back up and we toggle the before and the after, before and after, yeah, that's a really powerful change with minimal time investment, before and after, before and after. Because this shot's got a nice ethereal look, I'm gonna double down on that look and I'm gonna go into mystical, grab the amount slider and start injecting the lovely soft dreamy look of mystical as if I needed an excuse to add mystical into one of my photos. I always use it. But if we feel like the shadows are a bit dark, which I do in the foreground here, we can just boost that up. We can work with the smoothness to either make it a little more crunchy or a little softer. And once we're happy with the look of that, we can warm the overall glow up if we want to, or cool it down depending on the aesthetic that we're after. And you know what? While I thought I liked the warmer look for this one, I'm gonna cool it down. And once we're happy with where those sliders are at, we just grab the overall amount and just tickle that in to a point that we're happy with. I don't know, somewhere light, somewhere around 26, before and after, before and after. So let's have a toggle of where we came from and where we've got to before and after. It's a huge change and I could absolutely stop there. However, one thing that often happens when I'm doing these demonstration videos is I can actually lose sight of the overall aesthetic when I'm so invested in trying to teach the principles. And I think that's what's happened here. The color has kind of got away on me. I'm not really happy with it. So I have one more video I'd like to share with you on creating a unified color palette just to bring together your image as a whole. If you'd like to watch that video, click that right there and I'll show you a really great tip on how to change your colors without bleaching out the very bright ones. It's a really good tip. So I'll see you in that video. Bye-bye for now.